Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiore. In this video, we are going to be talking about the upper break frequency, the F2, of an inverting summing amplifier. Something like this. I'm showing this with just two input channels. You could have three, four, five, you know, however many. Now, quick overview. Basically, the way this works is each channel, each input, has its own gain, and that is set by the RF divided by its associated RN, or RI. So, for VIA number one, the gain would be a negative 10K, there's your RF, divided by 10K for your RI number one. In other words, an inverting gain of minus one. Looking at channel number two, we have 10K over 1K. So this has an inverting gain of 10. Basically, you just follow these equations. So, one volt in, gain of one, we expect one volt out. Here we have 100 millivolts in, but a gain of 10, so this also gets us one volt out. Now, I've used two different frequencies here so that we can see what's going on. 50 kilohertz, and then one-tenth the frequency, five kilohertz. So, basically, we're saying at the output, we would expect to see a 1 volt peak or 2 volt peak to peak 50 kilohertz sine wave combined with a 1 volt peak or 2 volt peak to peak 5 kilohertz sine wave, right? Smaller signal but bigger gain. And of course, we could have more input channels. You know, in reality, you would be mixing inputs from sensors or, you know, maybe microphones or something like this. This circuit, you wouldn't directly plug microphones in because there's a lot of limitations on it. We would have to add some things and alter some elements of it, but you could use it as a uh, sort of a building block, right? More details on that in the textbook. In any case, what would that look like at the output? Well, you have this low frequency, 5 kilohertz, relatively speaking low, and this higher frequency, 50 kilohertz, which is riding on top of it. So you basically you're going to see this 50 kilohertz, 2 volt peak to peak sine wave riding on top of a 2 volt peak to peak 5 kilohertz sine wave. And that is going to look something like this. Okay, so I'm only plotting the output here, V load. And you can see this fast variation in here, that's the 50 kilohertz, right? So notice this is only uh, you know, a, one, a 1 millisecond to 1.5 milliseconds. So, you know, at 50 kilohertz, this is moving right along. We get a couple of cycles in here. And for the 50 kilohertz, right, we see a number of cycles. Okay, so just focus on this change of the fast inner sine wave. Let's call it that. So what we see is this is going from about minus 2 to 0. Or if you look at it over here, it's going from 0 to about plus 2. 2 volts peak to peak. Right? No matter where you really look at it, that's what you're seeing. Two volts peak to peak. So that's what we had from this, right? The one volt with a gain of one gives us the one volt peak, two volts peak to peak at the output. The 100 millivolts was the five kilohertz with the gain of 10. That's this low, slow kind of variation that we're looking at. All right, so same deal. What kind of change do we get here? Well... You can either look at sort of the top of this envelope or the bottom of the envelope. You know, the, the actual 5 kilohertz frequency by itself would be like cutting the middle of this. But just to measure it, you can go from 0, and then it's going up to the 2, right? So just think of this as the sort of outline. That's a 2-volt peak-to-peak, or you could do the same thing at the bottom, right? You're going from minus 2 to 0, right? Great. Okay, so that by itself is... Maybe not, um, you know, too shocking. Let's just say that. But here's the interesting question. What do we wind up for an F2? What's the upper break frequency? Right. We know the gain of each channel is RF over RI. So for channel 1, it's RF over RI1. For channel 2, it's RF over RI2, and so on and so forth. And we could figure out a noise gain based on that, and then an F2. But are we saying that channel 1 would have a wider bandwidth than channel 2? Is that the case? 
Is that what we're implying here? Or is something else happening? Is there something more interesting happening? Well, you know, we can check this very, very quickly, right? If, if it was the case that every channel, um, its F2 is a function of its own A noise, let's say, a unique A noise for that particular channel, um, you know, that's, that's sort of the implied outcome, right? A seven, uh, excuse me, a TL071 has a, an upper break, a, a gain bandwidth of maybe three and a half megahertz, somewhere around there, three to four megahertz. So this has a gain of one, which would be a noise gain of two. And we'd be looking at maybe, you know, 1.7, 1.8, maybe as high as two, maybe as low as one and a half megahertz for uh, the F2 on this. And of course, Channel 2 would be much reduced because we'd be looking at 10K over 1K plus 1 for a noise gain. In other words, 11. So we'd only be looking at maybe, you know, on the, on the lowest end, 3 megahertz divided by 11, so a little less than 300 kilohertz. Well, this is easy enough to check. Let's just come in here and change what the frequency is. All right, so instead of using 50K, I'm going to use 5 100k. Why? Why 500k? Because, you know, if, if it is the fact, if it is the case that the F2 for this channel is a function of its own personalized A noise, so to speak, then this thing should have plenty of bandwidth. And I should see pretty much the same exact output that I saw before, except that the undulations would be at 500 kilohertz rather than 50 kilohertz. All right, let's see what we get. All right, so here's the in, inside undulations, right? They're, they're so fast that it's, it's just blurring all together, but this is the, the 500K. So first of all, the low frequency bit from the five kilohertz, I didn't change that. So I should still see the envelope of this should still be sitting at around two volts peak to peak. What are we getting? Well, here, this is about minus 0.5, and up here is about plus 1.5. So we, we appear to have some kind of DC offset, but we are getting the 2 volts for this, as expected. But what about this? Well, we can look right here. Right? This is coming in. It's not even at, at a, um, a negative 1.5 volts, and this is maybe a little bit over a negative half a volt. So this is maybe... A volt peak instead of two volts peak to peak so that would imply that the bandwidth for this has got to be less than 500 kilohertz right less than 500 kilohertz hmm you know we can we can see this a little easier if we come down here and take this channel and we reduce its signal so we can measure the effect much much more readily. So I'm going to go from millivolts to nanovolts. I'm going to keep the five kilohertz, right? I'm just going to bring that amplitude way down so that it's easier for us to see what's happening um, on channel number one. All right, so, you know, this is the 500 kilohertz going in here so fast that it's hard to see. If I stretch it out a little bit more, right, you can kind of see them in there if we zoom in. Right. For those of you that are somewhat skeptical, right, I'll just zoom in here. And you can see, okay, there's your high frequency. All right. Nonetheless, back to where we were. So we can see, all right, this is clearly not 2 volts peak to peak, right? You know, we're coming, we're coming down here. That's 250 minus 5. That's 375. So this is probably about somewhere around 380 or so, negative 380. And up here, it's a little bit less than 500 millivolts. So, yeah, you know, we're not even half of what we should be. So clearly the F2 is less. All right. How is that the case? What happened? So I guess this idea, right, this idea of the A noise being individualized maybe is not true. So right now we can do a, we can do a little experiment, which is what is the effect of this other channel? Because because this has a higher gain, it's not going to have as wide a bandwidth. So maybe there's some interaction between the channels. Well, you know, let's try this. I'm going to bring this down to 100 ohms. 
So what ends up happening now is this channel, instead of having a signal gain of 10, it's got a signal gain of 100. So the noise gain for this would be 101. If there is some kind of interaction, then I would expect the signal that I'm going to get through V in number 1 is going to be reduced even further. In other words, smaller than what we're looking at right here. Let's see what we get. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, look at that. Okay, so we're definitely reduced. Right, so last time, you know, we were looking at nearly 500 on the top end and a little bit shy, a little bit of the DC offset here. A little bit shy on the negative end, but now, oh, look at this. We even changed scale, right? This is 400 to 200. So we're getting a little over 350 on the top. We're getting about 250 on the bottom. So there is definitely some kind of impact going on. So this idea that, all right, there's an individual channel gain, but there's also an individual noise gain isn't really holding water. Because if that was the case, then changing this RI number two shouldn't have affected this channel. In fact, there is only one noise gain in the circuit. When we find noise gain, we basically do... Um, you know, a, a, a sort of like a thevenization of various sources. So I look, I would look back this way and say, okay, short this, short this. What do I have for my RI? In other words, something more like this. All right, so I've just removed channel number two. So that shorts out like this. If I had another, you know, third channel, fourth channel, I would do the same thing. So this makes it a little bit more obvious, a little bit more clear when I'm looking at V and 1 and I say, what is the noise gain? Well, I would short this and then find out what the effective RI is. And it would be very clear, right? If I had more inputs, it would be very clear that all of these things go from this node, this virtual ground node, to ground. So the effective RI is RI1 in parallel with RI2 in parallel with RI3 in parallel with however many RIs you have, however many channels you have. You take that and you calculate the value of, of a noise, and then you can use that value for your F2 count calculation. All channels get that bandwidth. All right? So when we throw in this signal over here, you know, this 50 kilohertz signal, um, everything works fine do a little transient analysis like we did before, All right? So we get that virtually two volt peak to peak signal as expected. But when I come in here and drop this resistance and this other channel, that makes the RI, the effective RI decrease. It makes the A noise um, get larger. And therefore, when we divide out, the F2 for the system, no matter what the input channel is, decreases. So let's try that. And sure enough, right, we just had this a moment ago. We had the full two volts, and now we're seeing less, right? So as I said, back here, you know, this, this op amp is sitting, you know, with a gain bandwidth of three or four megahertz. And now, right, I've got a 10K and a 100 ohm. Hmm. That parallel combo is just about 100 ohms. It's a little less than 100 ohms. So you take 10, 100, that's going to give you a, a, a noise gain of a little over 100. So you divide that out. You divide your 3 megahertz, 4 megahertz divided by 100. So now you're only looking at about a, you know, maybe a 30 kilohertz upper, upper break frequency. All right? Yeah, I put in 50 kilohertz. So sure, we expect the signal to drop down. It's not going to be... Uh, you know, full signal strength. We're beyond at 50 kilohertz. We're beyond the minus 3 dB point. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay, we're getting uh, a total of maybe a volt out of here, right? We're going up to you know, a little over 750 plus, about minus 150 on the bottom. So, you know, maybe a little bit less than a volt peak to peak. So that makes perfect sense given what we've calculated. And we could continue with this, you know, um, make it even smaller, ridiculously small value. And I'm just doing this to, to sort of prove the point, right? A noise gets even bigger now, and therefore your F2 is going to decrease even more. Even, even, even. And there you go. Okay?
Yeah, I know you see the 3.05, but look down here, 2.95. What's happening is we're getting a, uh, an increase in the, in the uh, DC offset, all right? But if you just look at the actual AC signal swing here, it's not very big at all. You know, we're only looking at maybe a little over 100 millivolts peak to peak for this, okay? All right, beautiful. So that's the ultimate. That's the thing to remember about your, your um, inverting summing amplifier is that you need to find this effective RI, which is the parallel combination of all the RIs for the input channels. Use that to find the A noise, and then you can use that to find the F2, and that's the F2 for the amplifier, right? For any of these inputs, that's the F2 that you're going to see. All right, great. So questions, put them down in the comments. Take care, and we'll see you next time.